Okay. So tonight, uh, the information session is um, aimed to really talk about Polytech, which is uh, part of the Hunterton County Vocational School District. It's one of the schools that we have. We also have the academies. Uh, those are for students entering ninth grade, their full-time academy programs. Um, but in 11th and 12th grade, we have students that are able to participate in what we call shared time programs at Polytech. That means half of their day would be at their home school and the other half of their day would be at Polytech. Um, so we're going to talk about the different programs that are available and how it works uh, applying to Polytech and how students get in so that you have a really good understanding of the benefits of career and technical education. So normally when I talk to students or parents, I ask them about students pl planning their future. And I, and I generally find that students are asking two questions, like what do I want to do and how do I get there? When they are in 10th grade, they are much more likely to know what they want to do. They're starting to really think about that, considering all the options. And so they are very geared as opposed to when they're in seventh and eighth grade, it's it's kind of hit or miss. They always don't know. They could probably change their mind. But as you move through high school, and I was a high school teacher for over 30 years, I can tell you by that point, there's that maturity. Students are starting to think about what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And then most importantly, how do I get there? And so I always remind everybody that whatever we decide to do as an adult in a profession, there's a pathway to getting there. And Polytech is definitely a, a, a pathway that is going to help students arrive at their destination. So when we think about it, we, we want to talk about career and technical education. And a lot of times you'll hear people banter the acronym CTE, and we're not really sure what that means. And what it is, what it does mean is career and technical education that prepares students for the successes of the workplace and for their education. So I like to use some common language by saying it prepares the students for what comes next. So that would be whether it's college or advanced credentials or on-the-job training, those are the pathways. Students who participate in career and technical education are often able to earn certifications or credentials or licenses or those skills that, that are necessary and even college credits. Um, the difference between career and technical education and a traditional model of education is that there's a lot of hands-on application. There's a lot of hands-on uh, training that students go through. And then as a result, they're able to have internships, apprenticeships, mentorships, portfolios, work studies, and more importantly is the real world experiences that they're gonna get with Polytech and the career work, the career pathway that they're going towards. So I like to tell people that career and technical education works because it's, it's, it's training and education driven by the industry trends and employer needs. And we do get insights from key business partners. We have people that actually help us shape our programs and tell us what students need to know if they're going to be in that career pathway. They'll even go as far as to tell us what types of equipment are the best models to work on so that students are trained, et cetera. Um, they get that, you know, true to life training. And what I love is that they really get to work with real customers in a lot of cases. So a lot of our programs, they have a component where they are working with the public in terms of customer service. And that's something that makes them really stand out in to, to, to an employer um, in terms of skills and marketable and I call them employability skills as well. Um, they also have exposure to diverse career fields that help to narrow focus and set realistic goals and develop that game plan for what you know, comes next as far as achieving success. So let me just pause for a second and say welcome if you just joined us. I know that somebody just logged on. Um, we are we just are at the very beginning of our presentation for Polytech and talking about career technical education. 
Now, when you look at these class of 2023, 2023 stats, you'll see that our students have availability to scholarships. They have the availability to participate in sports and extracurricular activities at their home school. I kind of call it the best of both worlds because they're still having that, uh, you know, ex intense high school experience as part of that culture in the fabric of their high school, but they get to spend a lot of time doing what they love. Um, they, a lot of our students go on to post-secondary institutions or, or other programs. 73% um, of our polytech students go on to either two-year, four-year, or uh, four-year colleges or advanced licensures and trainings. 15% um, went on straight to full-time work. Uh, many of our students are able to get college credits that they can take advantage of while they're with us. And they obviously are earning some scholarships. 92% um, of our students said that they were really decided on their path and that they would recommend Polytech to a friend. And so that's really great stats in terms of what our Polytech students do. We also have the availability for our students to participate in career-focused student organizations. So depending on the program that they choose, there's a lot of times there are career-focused organizations like HOSA and Skills USA and uh, different ones that students can participate in. And through those, they can participate in local and national competition, competitions that can strengthen their, their resumes and college applications. Um, they are able to apply for scholarship opportunities through there as well. Um, they have the connection to business and industry and opportunities for job shadowing, internships, pre-apprenticeships, um, and also employability and, um, and field trips and guest speakers. So those are all the things that they're able to do. Now, if you look at this next slide, you're going to see all of the Polytech course offerings that we have. And the animal science program, we won't talk about tonight because that is a full-time program only as of right now. Um, and so what we want to do is focus on the other programs that we have. We have automotive, which has a welding technology program, and it's morphing from automotive more towards a welding, traditional welding program. Uh, we have automotive services and automotive technology. We have art and visual communication, 3D computer animation, commercial arts and advertising design, graphic design. In our building technologies, we have construction science and heavy equipment operator program. Uh, we have computer networking and cybersecurity. That's a really phenomenal uh, program that we have that really helps students uh, carve out um, a great career in cybersecurity or networking. And there's so many oppor job opportunities in, in th that particular field. Cosmetology, which is very popular. Culinary arts and hospitality, also very popular. Law enforcement and homeland security. That's every aspect of the law and homeland security. So if they're interested in being a judge, a lawyer, uh, a parole officer, all of those things, police officer, that would all be encompassed here. Principles of teaching, which is near and dear to my heart since I am a teacher, and that's been uh, just a wonderful path for me, a career that I absolutely love, um, and that's for all levels of teaching. Health and medical sciences, allied health and healthcare science, and then we have career prep early college, so if none of the other polytech programs uh, appeal to a student, then the career prep and early college program is something that they can participate in and leave school early and at a, take college courses at a reduced rate and get jump started on their, their college programs. Um, and then there's Fire and EMT Academy. So all of these programs have work-based learning available for every Polytech program. So students are able to go out, particularly in 12th grade, and earn some money while they're working in industry. It has to be industry uh, related to their career program. And then uh, they also get college, uh, high school credits for that. So that's kind of cool as well. So welcome to the person who just jumped on. We uh, just went through the very beginning part of this information session. 
These are the courses that are offered at Polytech this, uh, this upcoming fall. Now, it's good to know that we are building a new, uh, we're building a whole new school at North Hunterton campus. Uh, on the Hunterton campus, and it will house some of our full-time programs, and some of our programs will go to full-time, but if your child starts next year, that will not affect them, so they will have share time for next year and the year after if they start next year, just so you know. Um, we will eventually phase out the share time programs for some of those. And up at North Hunterton, that would be the welding technology program. Uh, we would have co cosmetology and culinary arts over there. Um, wait, um, let me double check on the cosmetology. Definitely culinary arts. Uh, I apologize. Uh, that will go over there as well as heavy equipment operating program. Um, and a few others. So um, we will then have our locations would be North Hunterton campus, and we call that um, HCVSD Polytech North. And then we also have the central campus, which is located uh, right on the, you know, right adjacent to Hunterton Central. Um, so these are the, those will be eventually the two campuses. Right now, we have Bartles campus, which is five minutes from Huntington Central, and that one um, will eventually be phased out. But that's just important to know for the following year. Um, we do have what I call career pathways. These are jumping off careers that students can participate in or can seek, I should say, can seek after they have studied at Polytech. So if you pick any one of them, let's let's look at um, health and medical sciences. Uh, doesn't mean that they have to be a doctor. They could be a medical assistant, a physical therapist, a registered nurse, a physician, a speech therapist, a lab technician, a phlebotomist, all of those things. So you can see that there are many different career pathways uh, that students can can really seek after they complete the program at Polytech. It doesn't pigeonhole them into the exact career that the name of the program is. So this is just a little intro video for our Polytech and some of the course names have changed. We will be updating in this video, but as we are moving forward in our changes that are happening. I chose Polytech because I want to be a communications major, but I just wasn't sure which specific field I wanted to get into and kind of explore all the different career paths. I mean, it's just like a different atmosphere, you know, it's a lot more hands on. It's a lot better for me to learn. Can I just ask, are you guys hearing that OK? Yes. Okay. Hands down, it was just preparing me for college and making me more disciplined in my work. And it helped me really improve myself academically. I think the underlying factor is the work environment. I think it teaches you good work ethics and how to communicate with people and also the connections that you have and the foundation that you create. It's nice to have an environment like Polytech where you can make those little mistakes and it's not like you're not losing your job. You're not. There's no real uh, punishment. You just fix it and move forward. Something that I got at Polytech is an emphasis on a lot of current industry technology. You know, for someone like me who had at least a vague idea of the direction I wanted to go, um, it provided me an opportunity to learn more about that specified area and kind of get a little taste of like, oh, is this something I really want to do? I've just really enjoyed like getting ahead and learning all these things like 
it's a good it's a good program because it, it, it gives you the opportunity while you're still in high school to learn about these things and like even after taking the class maybe you find out that you're actually not interested in it at that point in high school it's really important to sort of try a lot of things um i think even into your college years it's important to be trying a lot of things and finding out what you don't like as much as what you do like definitely this program has helped a lot and i feel like i'm going into school knowing something and maybe even having like an edge on everyone else and I really feel like I know the basics of it at least. The kids that don't go to Polytech, they're not gonna learn the stuff that we learned until they're in college. And I feel that as a junior in high school, I know just as much as say a sophomore in college would. The one thing I'll take away from Polytech is the community I have with everyone, uh, the, the connections I have with everyone and how I can work with others. This uh, program brought out in him some passion and some interest that caused him to study harder and to prepare harder. And so his grades went. My advice would be, why wouldn't you try this? Because of the practical nature of the preparation and the skills and the disciplines really end up paying off in the future. Some things that the regular school doesn't offer. Then when we were making decisions about college, we were making informed decisions about the kind of money we were going to be spending because we already knew. Many people go away to college to get an education that starts. There's value, there's return, and it works. Okay, so um, that's just a little glimpse at what Polytech can do for students to, to really um, engage them in the type of career learning that will really pay off in dividends. So we're going to skip past the animal science because that now is a full-time program. We have automotive, automotive and fabrication. So you can see that we have welding technology. We have automotive services and automotive technology. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, automotive technology. So we have welding technology. You can see that they get their AWS level one welder, the ASE student certifications, OSHA 10 safety, some safety credentials, um, automotive services, ASC, ASE student certification, and the technology program, they get several of those student certifications. With construction technology, they get the OSHA 10 safety and heavy equipment. They also have OSHA 10 as well as NCCER heavy equipment operations level one and two. Um, when we look at cosmetology, students who are in the shared type program will begin their junior year. They'll have junior and senior year and they will complete uh, their certification in the adult ed cosmetology completer program. Once it does become a full-time program, they will no longer have to go to adult ed. It'll just be covered in the four years that they take it. But for right now, they will have to go uh, for a third course through the adult cosmetology completer program. Uh, when we talk about art and visual communication, we have that 3D computer animation, which is foundations in traditional art that leads to successful uh, you know, success in digital art. We also have commercial arts and advertising design. Uh, we have graphic design, which they earn uh, up to three credits through Sedentary University. There is a picture I'll show you in a minute of some of the work that students in those art programs do, which is just absolutely amazing. Culinary arts and hospitality is a shared time program, but will is slated to become a full-time program at some point uh, once we transition over. It will have a state-of-the-art commercial kitchen. As students earn their Surf Save, their Pro Star, National Certificate of Achievement, and they do have pre-apprenticeship opportunities available through YTTY, which is Youth Transitions to Work. So they uh, are able to do that as well. Law Enforcement and Homeland Security. There is a GPA requirement because there are up to nine college credits that students can get uh, from RVCC. 
They really look at the law from every aspect, protection of US citizens, territory, assets of external threats, criminal justice system, process, police procedures, and they even go as far as to do some firearms training. That's all the things that happen in that program. The health and medical science is, uh, we have two different ones. The allied health does not have a GPA requirement because students are not getting college credits, but they do have certification, certified clinical medical assisting, the CCMA, the first aid, CPR, and AED, as well as the OSHA 10. And they also have exposure to electrocardiogram and phlebotomy. In the healthcare science program, there is a GPA that is required, and that's because students can earn up to 22 college credits. So that is really a, um, a really great program. So these were the art that I was talking about, the exposure to some of the programs, uh, some of the work that the students in the different programs are doing, the graphic design. Uh, we have students, if you follow us on social media, you'll see the incredible work that they're doing. And there is that customer service element that they get. Uh, education, it's the principle of teaching. Those students don't have to be studying early childhood education, but part of the program will give them exposure to kinder to uh, students in early childhood education through the Kinder Magic Preschool. But they also do professional internships and they are able to get their pediatric first aid, CPR, progress towards their CDA and uh, earn up to 15 college credits through RBCC and Ryder University. It is a, uh, a recommendation or a GPA of 3.0 required there. The Fire and EMT Academy is um, offered two different ways. If they're taking it for high school credit, they're able to take it in the fall, uh, the Fire Academy and EMT in the spring, and then, um, it, they would have to pay in advance for the program, but they get reimbursed upon successful completion. If they're not taking it for high school credit, they would take it um, they would take it after school, evenings, and weekends, and they can only take the fire or an EMT academy on top of the full load of high school. So it depends on how they want to do it. Um, they would be able to get their firefighter one and EMT certification as well. Now this college and career prep is the one that I was talking about that every student could do if they're not, if Polytech doesn't have a program that suits them, they can jumpstart their college career. So they're able to get into the uh, career prep early college and earn up to 12 college credits. They, that could be on campus. It could be online instruction, certification courses, et cetera. They will have to pay in advance but they will get reimbursed upon successful completion. Um, and then our students are also able to do work-based learning opportunities, which is for all of the programs that we have at Polytech, they may be able to earn, um, you know, earn money while they do apprenticeships, internships, job shadowing, and cooperative education. Okay, so all of those are available to the students as well. So how it works is that current 10th and 11th grade students are eligible to apply, and in some cases, students may be able to apply earlier, for example, homeschool students. Um, students complete all academics at their home school, and then they're bused to Polytech for half day. Normally, 11th grade comes to Polytech in the morning and goes, and goes to their home school in the afternoon. And in 12th grade, they do their homeschool in the, in the morning and come to Polytech in the afternoon. Um, most programs are two-year programs and offer 20 credits each. Some programs offer additional high school credit opportunities. And all of our programs have that component of hands-on work-based education. So students are really um, engaged in their learning. Now, right now, applications are open. And if you visit hcvsd.org, you'll be able to click the green apply now button. If you go to Polytech, uh, you're able to do that. Um, the, it, we have ongoing applications for Polytech students. So if they apply by December the 15th, they will be notified by January 12th, <laughs> excuse me, if they got into their program. If, um, if they apply after December 15th, they are, it's a rolling admissions basis. So depending on 
when they apply within a short period of time after their evaluate their all their credentials are evaluated, they will um, be receive notification. The most important thing that you want to remember is that the earlier that students apply to Polytech, the more um, the better the chances are that they get in because it is first come first serve. So students that are applying now are very likely to get their first choice of a program. Students applying in May, those classes may already be filled. And last year, we had a record number of applications in most of our classes, and they were filled to capacity by May. So the earlier that they apply, the better the opportunity that they have. Um, so those are, that's how, you know, how you want to go about applying. Now, if you want to learn more, it's really a great idea to follow us on social media because we post almost daily about the great things happening at Polytech and important information. They also are able to schedule a visit. Um, you can talk with your school counselor or if it's, parents can advocate for their students to talk with their school counselor. Uh, we do have the virtual information session. Tonight is the last night that we're doing it. And then we have an open house on the 27th. So those are the opportunities that we have here.